we'll just take a look at this quickly um, as a kind of review of what we're talking about. We were talking about, I, I want to look at this because I think I mentioned contingency tables earlier, but uh, here, here they are again. It says, in 1965, the composition of U.S. dimes, quarters, and half dollars was changed from silver to a copper clad. A woman has a bank in which she has accumulated several coins since childhood. The bank's contents are the following. Okay, find the probability that a randomly selected coin is a silver coin. Okay, we'll start there. So, um, to do this, we would look at our basic formula for probability. If we're interested in probability of silver, then we need to look at the number of silver coins divided by the total. Okay, we can almost always bring probability back to this basic type formula. Okay, number of silver coins divided by the total. And so, um, okay, let me read this again. Aren't all these coins silver? What did I miss? Uh, oh, okay. Before 65, they were silver, right? Okay. So then we need to figure out the total um, number of silver coins, add those numbers together. Okay, 1,000 coins. So that goes on the bottom. And the total number of silver would be what? Okay. I got 310. 310? Anybody? Okay. 300. All right. So then um, we would say... We cross out the zeros. Looks like uh, there's a 30% chance or 0 0.30. The probability of getting a silver coin is 0 0.30. Okay, what about the probability of getting a quarter? Well, altogether, how many quarters do we have? Okay. All right. And so the probability of a quarter is going to be 400 over a thousand okay or point four oh okay and what about the probability of a silver quarter okay how many silver quarters do we have okay 113 and we're going to divide that by a thousand Okay, which comes up to, okay, that's what I thought, 0.113. And then we have a silver coin or a quarter. Okay, so we've got keyword what here? Or, very good. And that tells us to use which rule? Addition. Okay, so with the addition rule, which question do we ask? Are, are the events mutually exclusive? Can we have a coin that is both silver and a quarter? Yes. So in that case, we look at the probability of silver time, or rather plus the probability of quarter minus the probability of both. Okay. And so I think we calculated the probability of silver to be 0.3 already. The probability of a quarter is 0.4. The probability of both is 0.113. And so we get 0.7 minus 0.113 is what? 0.587. Okay, questions about this? All right, this last one is here, so we'll do it as well. Probability of dime or quarter. Okay, we get, um, again, we've got keyword or, so we're interested in the probability 
of a dime plus the probability of quarter. Do we need to worry about both? No. A single coin can't be both a dime and a quarter. Okay, so altogether, how many dimes do we have? Okay, 500 dimes. So 500 over 1,000. And how many quarters? 400. Okay. So we get 900 over 1,000. Okay, questions about that? Or um, point 90%, point 0.9. Yes. No, um, because a single coin can't be a dime and a quarter. So we saw keyword or, which said addition rule, um, and then we ask ourselves, are these events mutually exclusive? And these are. So we don't have to worry about both. Okay, the probability of both would be zero. Okay, other questions? Okay, we didn't talk about it at all. Okay. All right, let's go back there then, because that will be important. Oh, yes. <laughs> Your handout that I gave you today, or, or from the other day? Okay. Okay. All right, we'll go back and look at some of these things. So how far back do I need to go? Let's see. Page this page. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Great. Okay. All right, this one is an example of probability from a sample space. And I'm going to read this carefully because biology is not my thing. Um, it says men have XY or YX chromosomes and women have XX chromosomes. X-linked recessive genetic diseases occur when there is a defective X chromosome without a paired X chromosome that is good. And the following represent a defective X chromosome with lowercase x. So a child with XY or YX pair of chromosomes will have the disease and a child with XX or XY or YX or, you know, as long as you got a, a good X, a capital X, you're okay. All right, each parent contributes one of the chromosomes to the child, okay? If a father has the defective X chromosome and the mother has good chromosomes, what is the probability that a son will inherit the disease. Okay, so let me see if I can get this right. All right, so if the father has defective X chromosome, then he's lowercase x, capital Y. Is that right? And the mother, she's, uh, yes, two good X's, okay? And so in that case, we start with the father. We did a tree diagram, right? Okay, the father could be lowercase x, capital Y, and then when we put that with the mother, she's capital X, capital X. Okay, capital X, capital X. Okay, this is, this little fancy curve says lowercase x. Okay, so our outcomes in this situation could possibly be lowercase x, x, lowercase x, x, y, x, and y, x. Is that right? Well, that's the next part is, first of all, yeah, we got to figure out what is the probability that a son will inherit the disease. So here we only have two that are sons. Right? And so the probability that the son inherits the disease would be what? Zero. Okay. Very nice. Questions about that? Yes. You don't like my biology? 
Yeah, well, and if it wasn't so long ago. Um, <laughs> all right. Okay, that's been about 20 years for me. Um, <laughs> but anyway, if a father has the defect, okay, same situation, but what is the probability that a daughter will inherit disease? Inherit the disease. That's what? Still zero, right? These are the daughters, but both of them have capital X, which is good, okay? They'll carry the trait, but they don't have the disease, okay? So we'll say zero for them, all right? If a mother has, here's a new situation. If a mother has one defective chromosome, and one good X chromosome, and the father has good XY chromosomes, what is the probability that a son will inherit the disease? All right, and so let's see. Mother has one defective and one good, so she's lowercase x, X, all right, and dad is XY. So it doesn't matter who goes first. There's mom. And then now here comes dad. Okay, and so we get lowercase x, x, lowercase x, y, capital X, capital X, capital X, capital Y. Okay, so what is the probability that a son will inherit the disease. So the sons are here and here, right? And so the probability that the son will inherit the disease is what? 50%, we'd say one half. Okay. All right, same situation. What is the probability that a daughter will inherit the disease? Still what? Zero? Oh, that's right, that's right. Okay, these are the daughters, but they both have a good X, right? And so the probability of a daughter inheriting a disease is zero. Questions about this? Okay, why is it half? For the sons? There are two sons, but one of them gets the disease out of the two. Okay. All right, very good. It was a nice application. All right, very good. Um, something that we were using here that we haven't really talked about is conditional probability. That's going to be big a little bit later um, when we get to the multiplication rule. But basically with conditional probability, there's some piece of information that's given. Um, when they said it's a son, that's the given. And once they said that, I mean, without me even really having to tell you, you knew that we excluded daughters, right? So it was probability based on the fact that something else has already occurred or we know something about the outcome. It's a son. Now that we know that it's a son, what's the probability that they inherit the disease? So we'll talk about that a little bit more um, over in the next section, I think. Okay, complement of event A. Okay, we got the probability. Well, first of all, the complement of A is uh, all events that do not include A. So you could almost think of it as the opposite of A. Okay, if we were to use our sample space, okay, if these were all of the events that are under discussion, and these are events A, then everything outside of A is A complement. And the notation we use is A with a line over it. We say A complement. Okay? Now, A and its complement break the sample space up into two pieces, as you see there. You're either in A or you're in the complement. All right? So that means that the probability of A plus the probability of A complement equals what? One. You have to be in one or the other. And A and A complement cover everything, 
and they're non-overlapping. All right. So uh, we don't have to worry about subtracting for both because you can't be in both. You're in one or the other. And that means that the probability of A is equal to 1 minus the probability of A complement. Just subtracting from both sides. Or we could say the probability of A complement equals 1 minus the probability of A. Okay, either way, it doesn't really matter because they're complements of one another. Okay, you don't have to say which one is A and which one's the complement. Not really, they're complements of one another. And what we're going to find um, when we get into complements in detail a little bit later is that sometimes it's easier for us to calculate the probability of A or whatever, one event, by first finding the probability of its complement and just subtracting that from one. All right, so that's how we're going to use that in this example, even though there might be other ways that you could do this. Okay, a bag of M&Ms has five red, four blue, three orange, four brown, and two yellow candies. If a candy is randomly selected, find the probability of selecting a candy that is not blue. Okay, so if B is the event of selecting a blue candy, then B complement is not blue. Okay, just kind of abbreviating. And so if I wanted to calculate the probability of not getting a blue candy, all right, it would save me a little work. I mean, you know, it's not like this is really difficult, but save me a little work by just saying 1 minus the probability of blue. I don't have to worry about counting up green, orange, brown, and yellow. Right? I can just focus still on blue and subtract that from 1. And so the probability of getting a blue M&M is what? What is it? How many blue M&Ms do we have? Four. Four. Divided by the total, which is 21? 24. Very good. Okay, 1 minus 4 over 24. Or that's 20 over 24 which reduces to 4, um, or rather 5, 6. Okay, okay very good. 0.83. All right. So that's, that's kind of how we use complements. You want to keep that in mind, um, because like I said, we'll come back and talk about that in detail a little bit later. Okay, questions about this?